Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was here today Watching all the brothers and sisters divided on the sunnah he gave He be screaming out to the ruler of this world saying you're to blame Return to the guidance of Allah that will set you free بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا My dear respected brothers and sisters This episode is the last episode in this series In this series we dealt with the concept of state in Islam And we said in the previous episode at least, that one of the main foundations of the Islamic State is to establish justice. Establishing justice is a foundation for any state and in particular for the Islamic State and Allah Jalla commanded us to establish justice in all our affairs. وَإِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَن تَحْكُمُوا بِالْعَدِلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ نِعِمَّا يَعِبُكُمْ بِهِ if you judge between people, judge according to justice. And Allah Jalla commanded us to establish qist, the word qist, which means justice in other verses of the Quran. And Allah Jalla says, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَن لَا تَعْدِلُوا إِعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ Even if you have hatred uh, towards any people, this should, not this should not stop you from establishing justice because establishing justice is very close to taqwa. There are many other ayat and a hadith that talk about the importance of establishing justice and as we said that if a person oppressed another person or took the right of another person then that right will not be forgiven even by Allah Jalla wa Ala. What does that mean? It means, as it is established in a number of ayat and hadith, that the oppressed person, he will take his right at the day of resurrection. And according to some scholars, that if the uh, person has no hasanat to be given, uh, and this was confirmed in number of in, in one of the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that if the oppressor lack of hasanat, run out of hasanat, Allah Jalla wa ala will put the bad deeds on his shoulder. Allah Jalla wa ala will take sins from the oppressed person and he will put them on this person who oppressed others. This, my dear respected brothers and sisters, cover the wali, the amir, the governor, and including amir al-mu'mini. Including who? including the head of the state. And this shows that Allah Jalla deals with people almost equally according to their responsibilities, of course. In fact, Allah Jalla puts more responsibilities on the Amir. That's why their roles from an Islamic perspective is a matter of responsibility. It is not an honor. And that's why According to the Islamic theory, the people who feel uh, that the responsibility is bigger than themselves, they should run away from that responsibility. The people who feel that they cannot fulfill the responsibility of being an emir or a governor, they should not put themselves forward. In fact, According to the Islamic theory, if there are other people who can establish justice, you should not put yourself forward. And that's why the companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and in particular, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, in the beginning they were not pleased and they were not proud to become the Khalifa. These days we see the candidates running 
to become the emirs. Of course, there is an exception. If the person knows that he will provide something that others will never provide, means if there is a state and all the candidates are not Islamic people and myself, I feel that I can provide Islamic solutions, then it is obligatory upon me to put myself forward in that position. But other than this case, the people should feel that it is what? A responsibility to become the head of the space, the head of the state. It is not an honor. You are not privileged by being an emir. You are burdened by becoming the emir. Subhanallah al -Azim. Am I burdened by becoming the emir? Yes. Remember the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, any person who has been given authority and he dies, when he dies cheating his people, Allah jalla wa'ala will deprive him from the paradise. Subhanallah al -Azim. We need to remember this when we talk about the Islamic state. Moreover, my dear respected brothers and sisters, as we said last time that the head of the state is just an employee by the state. What does that mean? It means that, as we said before, that they have the power over him to remove him. And he should execute the law of Allah Jalla wa ala for their benefit. This is his role, full stop. And that's why the uh, economy that he has control of, he is not, uh, he is just a treasurer over that wealth. He does not own the wealth. I know that many people see the dictators in front of us, and they see that, oh, those dictators are normally rich. And whenever they give their people, they think that they are giving them from their own wealth and they want people to be thankful to them because they have given them money. No. Look at the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam when he said that innama ana qasim means I, I am just a person who divide the wealth between you. In one narration, uh, in one narration, he said that Allah Jalla wa ala is al mu'ti Allah is the one who gives and I am just the person who distributes what Allah Jalla wa ala has given. Subhanallah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this. Of course, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Innama ana qasim, I'm just a person who divides and distributes the wealth between people according to the law of Allah Jalla wa ala. He said that from his position as what? Not as a prophet, but as the head of the state. Of course, we should remember that he is a prophet at all times. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu once addressed the people and he said whoever wants to know about halal and haram should go for Mu'ad, who wants to know about Fara'id he should go to Zayd ibn Thabit, whoever wants money he should come to me because I am the khazin, I am the treasurer. He just, uh, he doesn't own the money, he doesn't own the treasurer, uh, the treasure of the country of the Islamic state, state, he just distributes it. He just distributed for the people who are entitled of it. This is an important feature of the Islamic state, and this is an important feature of the head of the Islamic state. As I said before, my dear respected brothers and sisters, this is a very vast topic. And we are coming to the end of, these, uh, of this series. And we do not have time to discuss all these matters that we have discussed in details. But I hope that I was able to give you just a very general brief idea about the Islamic State according to Islam. We said that the Islamic State 
according to Islam, is part of Islam, is part of ibadah. Establishing an Islamic state is part of ibadah because ibadah is a comprehensive way of life. Because Islam is a comprehensive way of life. Islam does not deal with ibadat only the ibadat that we think that they are the only ibadat. No. Islam looks at the whole life as a matter of ibadah. Then we said that the Islamic state can be founded based on certain elements that can be extracted from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam that has been reported by Abdullah ibn Salam. When Abdullah ibn Salam said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Medina and he said, Ayyuhan nas, remember the hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the beginning of the establishment of the Islamic state, he said, O oh people, extend salam between all of you in order to maintain peace and security between all members of the society. Then the Prophet sallallahu empowered people to share food. So the second element of the Islamic state is not to let people starve, not to have people who feel hungry to fulfill the basic needs of all inhabitants. And the third important foundation of the Islamic State is to establish strong relationship with Allah Jalla wa'ala. And the Islamic State should call all non-Muslims, the Islamic State should call all non-Muslims to establish a strong relationship with Allah Jalla wa'ala. Should call all non-Muslims to establish Tawheed of Allah Jalla wa'ala. The Islamic State should promise people one thing, is what? To go to Jannah. If they fulfill the, knee, the elements that we have just mentioned. However, the Islamic State has some other responsibilities or features. One important feature is what? Is to establish justice, to establish Adil. Because this is one of the essential values of Islam, Al-Adl. And we mentioned that the head of the Islamic State is an employee by the people. He cannot be a dictator. He cannot force himself upon them. And at a certain point, they have the power to remove him through the Ahl al-Hal wal aqd through the board of Shura who have been appointed as Ahl al-Halli wal aqd This is the general feature or these are the general features of the Islamic State. Brothers and sisters, I call upon all of you to read more about the features of the Islamic State. I hope that I have given you a very summarized and concise picture of the Islamic State. Why? It is a dream of, uh, it is a dream for all of us to see one time that we have the Islamic State of Khilafah. This is an aim and it should be an aim for every single Muslim. Why? Allah Jalla wa'ala says in the Quran, Huwa الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون. He is the one who sent his prophet with huda, with guidance and the true religion ليظهره in order to make this religion superior to any other religion, to make this system superior to any other system, even if the polyists dislike this. And we should ask Allah Jalla wa ala to help us to establish the Islamic system in ourselves and to establish Islamic systems around us. Once we have the Islamic system living as a model in front of all of the humanity, then the whole humanity will see this role model and will follow Islam. It will be the best da'wah for every single one. At that time, 
only at that time justice will prevail because if there is no tawheed there is no justice and that is the importance of the islamic system jazakumullahu khairan my dear respected brothers and sisters and let us continue making this dua and let us read more about establishing islamic system establishing khilafa and how can we establish khilafa and it is not a discussion that is related to a certain group it is a discussion that is related to all of us as muslims all young people all people men women should understand this important discussion jazakumullahu khaira بارك الله فيكم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على خير الخلق نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم was here today watching all the brothers and sisters divided on the sunnah he gave he be screaming out to the moor of his world saying you're to blame Turn to the guidance of Allah that will set you free.